And in our last time together, we learned that we must prioritize our conscious awareness to pick up on the kingdom of God. We discovered that when we have our conscious mind clouded and, and full of everyday things, we don't have room for what's being put in us to create. So it's like overload. Then we learn that we must live as a spirit man who has now who has come to live or, or live like the spirit is in us because we are spirit beings ourselves is what I'm trying to say. And that it's by the inc incorruptible seed of the word of God. So we got to learn how to live as a spirit, say as a spirit. Because sometimes we're so mindful of our flesh, we forget that we're spirits. And that should be the dominant you. Not your flesh. Your spirit is supposed to be the dominant you. But we spend very little time on the spirit and a lot on the flesh. So all we can get is what? Flesh results. Therefore, we have been commanded to renew our minds unto, say unto, the word of God. Not unto the commercials, not unto your favorite sitcom, not unto the news. He says renew your mind to the word. Okay, let's go to Romans 12. Just so you can look at it and see. Just to make sure that I'm telling you the truth. Because sometimes we think, you know, pastor just slipping something in there to make us behave. Or to come into a, uh, well, now see, if you had a better handle on the word, you, you would be agreeing a whole lot sooner. I wouldn't have to carry you to Romans 12, 1 and 2. You'd be saying, that's right, pastor. Cause, because that's, that's what I read. Isn't that, tr isn't that right? So now you read it out loud. What does Romans 12, 1 and 2 say? Read it. Okay, so who's doing the presentation here? I am. And what am I presenting? My body. That means I'm going to check it. That means in order to bring it before the Lord, I got to do some checking on this body, right? Okay, read verse 2. By the renewing. What is that? Good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So now, my renewal is not optional. Jesus never offered us options. You can't find it in the Bible. There are no options. You can choose one because you have the ability to choose, but you're not given one. See, that what happened to the devil. He chose an option he didn't have and got kicked out of heaven. You don't have an option to not renew your mind. Not if you plan on working with God. See, we, we got to keep it where it's real. If you plan on working with God, you have to renew your mind. Then we say our conscious mind has to cooperate with the subconscious or the imagination in order to create. Because your subconscious is your imagination. It's like a computer. It stores all the data you come in contact with. And it can be processed at any time you access it. One of the four, there are four major functions of a computer. My kids going to like this because they're going to think I'm a whiz. That is to have input, that's data going in. Then there is storage. Then there's processing. And then there's output. Did I get it right, son? All right. That's my amen corner. So anytime I want to access what's on my hard drive, that's your imagination, I can. 
But if my conscious awareness, if the Holy Spirit is trying to get something to my subconscious, my out of my imagination, if my conscious mind is loaded with cares of life, it cannot create because it needs the conscious awareness to cooperate to speak it. Because what's in you has to be spoken. It doesn't get out just because it's in you. It, listen, the Bible declares that what's in abundance in you, what's going to talk? Your mouth. The mouth talks it. Because that's the only way it can create. The mouth has to speak it. Mm. So then if we never renew our minds to the word and the word is never spoken, we will not create according to the plan or the will of God. And this is where we find a lot of the believers. We, we get a lot of word. We get a lot of input. But we're not outputting anything. It's on your hard drive. But you're not accessing it. You're not processing it because it takes meditation. Man. You don't even know what's on your hard drive for some of you. But if you can remember when you were four, how many of you remember anything when you were four? You know why you remember it? Because it's on your hard drive. It didn't get deleted. Jesus. Since we are made in God's image and given the same ability as God to call things into existence, that's our responsibility is to take what's on the hard drive that's been put in there because according to the word, we're supposed to be putting the word. See, how do I see when we say renew the mind, you think that just your conscious mind. No, you're renewing your data bank. Because that's where the spirit taps. This is why putting the word in, the word has to go in as data so the, mad, so the subconscious can process it. And it gets into the heart. And the heart begins to output. Are you learning? So my renewal is not optional. But we've been dragging our feet in this area. This is why we don't see the manifestation that we should get. Because we are not accessing the data bank. Then you say, well, I don't know what I got to do. I that's your problem. You, and listen, if it didn't go in, it can't come out. <laughs> you got your answer right there. If you didn't put the word in, it can't come out. God not waving a magic wand and putting a word in your heart that you didn't put in there. He can only pull on and pull up and pull out what's in you. Okay. All right. So here is one of the greatest tools that the devil uses against every Christian, including you and I. It's called wasted time. Wasted time. See, the devil knows something that you may not recognize, but you'll know today. That your physical body is not going to live forever in its current condition. If Jesus tarry, all our body is going to go to the grave. The devil knows that. Ooh. You need to know that. I don't think some of y'all realize that yet. <laughs> but if Jesus should tarry and you don't live to be 120, you're going to leave here because your body going to say, exit left. The devil realizes that if he can get you to waste time by not renewing your mind, And not becoming productive for the kingdom. Because that's the only way you can be productive is through mind renewal. 
How do I produce what I don't know? You can't produce what you don't know. Okay, produce a thigmajig. Give me a description of it. You can't even get a picture of it. Because that could fit anything, anywhere. Oh, no. But see, that's what we're doing with the word. We, we, listen, he, the devil gets you to waste time by not renewing your mind and not becoming productive for the kingdom of God. Why? Because he knows that eventually you're going to run out of time. The body going to die. And you would have not been productive. You just got old. Oh, Jesus. You say, oh, pastor, you going to really talk that? Yeah. I know you think you're doing something for the Lord, but you need to ask him if you're doing what he needs you to do before you declare yourself uh, above the rest. Because you don't know if you're doing what he really needs you to do. The devil also realizes that your wasting time not being productive will lead to discouragement and dissatisfaction with yourself. This is why so much depression is in the body of Christ. You're just dissatisfied with yourself. It's not a whole lot of issue. Now, if this continues... This will cause more damage to you than what the devil will do to you overtly. Because the devil will put you on what we call self-check. He doesn't have to send another demon out to harass you. You're doing it to yourself now. Kind of like what they did in slavery. They taught you and trained you not to go over so hit this and there. Why? Because it would desire, and that's what they did in the next generation. They said, well, you can do this, but you can't do that. And that talk that went down from generation to generation. It's a slave mentality. Now, slavery is wrong, period. But we got to get past that point. We've been called to be free people. So we got to think like free people. So he put you on self-check. You're no longer a threat to the kingdom of darkness because he got you on self-check. You, you harassing yourself now. Kind of dumb, but that's what's happening. So it is critical that we renew our minds to the things of God. It's not optional. Okay, moving on. Are you still here? All right. So faith, look at Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So my faith has a, is a substance. It's tangible, but it's in a realm where it's tangible. I taught you this before. Look at Genesis 8:22. We're going to learn something this morning. Said, look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to learn this morning. And you're not going to stop me. Genesis 8:22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So what is that saying to me? There's an evolution that is constant. That means productivity is always going on. Uh-oh. I want you to catch that. So there's, there's a constant evolution. Whether it's winter, summer, heat, cold, day, or night. Seed, time, and harvest is still working. Productivity is always going. Whew, Jesus. In this one verse, God tells us how his whole kingdom 
works. Hmm. Jesus said, my kingdom is not from this world. Look at John 18, 36. Let's validate that because I want you to walk away with something. Because people said, you know, I heard different ones on YouTube say, if they don't give you a scripture, then don't listen to them. You know, that may, that's not necessarily accurate, but, you know, you do what you got to do. I'm going to give you a scripture so you can walk away with a scripture. Amen. Genesis 18, 36. I mean, not Genesis, John, I apologize. John 18, 36. When you have it, say, I have it. Jesus answered, now he's talking to Pilate. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. Oh. Well, where is his kingdom? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, then my servants they be fighting and you be losing in essence that I should not be delivered to the Jews but now is my kingdom not from here so now if you're indeed part of the kingdom of God you got to understand something the kingdom you're from is not from here okay so when we come on the scene and where we come from when we speak about the believer's walk of faith, when we start talking about the believer's walk of faith, there are some things you got to know. Watch this. Okay. Everything cool back there? All right. I'm getting ready to make a statement that you're going to have to develop in you right now. You ready? You cannot be a believer without believing in the invisible. I'll say it again. You cannot be a believer without believing in the invisible. Mm. Look at John 3. Verses 1, I'm going to read this real fast because I want to read the whole account. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. How he know he come from God? For no man can do these things, these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Well, now, if your born again came from this realm right here, you, got, you, got to, you need to turn that card back in. Because born again is an invisible term. Ooh. <laughs> we'll get that. Just hold on. How can a man, Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? Now, that was dumb to even ask it. And be born. Jesus answered, because how that grown man, anyway. Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he will not or cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You see that? That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. People don't understand where you come from. They're looking for a natural sign. Ooh, that's a lot of believers are looking for natural signs. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, he said, I thought you were educated. I thought you were highly intelligent. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know 
and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not when I give you an earthly example, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Hallelujah. Look at Romans 1, verse 19 to 20. I'm giving you some scripture that let you understand that you are more spirit than you are natural. And that you come from the realm of the invisible. Listen, listen. Because that which may, Romans 1, 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Okay. We'll hold up from there right there for a minute. I want to do a demonstration real quick. And I'm a, I'm a volunteer to volunteer. <laughs> Kayla, come here, baby. I'm volunteering you. It's all right. Come on. I'm not going to hurt you. This is going to be a quick fix. Everybody, this is Kayla. Joanna, beautiful, isn't she? All right. Kayla, do you believe I have a Bible in my hand? I don't believe it. Why do you believe I have a Bible in my hand? Because you see it. Talk loud, because you see it. You say you believe it because it's what? Visible. I say I don't believe it because it's visible. Now, one of us right and one of us wrong. Y'all vote. Everybody that agree with Kayla, raise your hand. This is not a trick. Everybody that agree with me, raise your hand. Now, Kayla... You won the election. <laughs> now, don't get embarrassed because it's training. But you and all your frenemies <laughs> are wrong. Thank you so much. Have a seat. That's the way most believers that say they're believers operate. So we don't have a lot of believers. Because we don't believe it until we see it. We were trained that way. Believe it, seeing is believing. The Bible doesn't teach that. That'll get you in trouble because seeing is not believing. Ooh, Jesus. Are you learning? Are you still with me? That, see how simple that was? We, and I'm going to validate. This is just a small example of all the variables we have in the body of Christ. When we should all be on the same page in the way we think about the word of God. But we aren't. Because we are not all being trained the same. Hmm. All of us should know the same knowledge and have the same answer to the same question. That's the intent of the head of the church. That's the intent of Jesus. We're not supposed to have individual answers for questions. The Bible gives us the answers that we need. We're not supposed to take doctrinal beliefs and turn them into the answer when the Bible gives us the answer. Because doctrinal beliefs, they may be good in one facet, but they can be extremely harmful when it comes to believing this word. Jesus talked about that, remember? He said, your traditions make the word of none effect. That's part of your belief system. Okay, let me keep going because ooh, the anointing is strong up here. Hallelujah. So we see these variables where in the body of Christ, we're not getting the same answer. So she and I begin to talk a different language. 
Because I'm saying, I don't believe it because it's visible. She said, I believe it. No, she said, I believe it because it is visible. I said, I don't believe it because it's visible. Now, let's prove who's right and wrong. Look at John 20. Look at verse 24. John chapter 20, verse 24. Now, this is the account of Thomas and the, and the disciples. <clears throat> they were up in the room. And Jesus, when Jesus first came, Thomas wasn't present. How many of y'all read that account? And when the disciples told Thomas, we just saw Jesus, he said, I don't believe it. How many of y'all hear something say, I don't believe that? Catch yourself before you say it, because it really happened. You might as well go in and believe it. It happened. They made some dumb decisions for our nation. It happened. But watch this. Eight days later, Jesus come back. Thomas is now in the room. <laughs> Look at verse 25. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I can see something. I'm going to paraphrase it just a little bit. Just to give it some drama. Except. I can see something unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger in the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. He needed to see before he believed. Jesus doesn't teach that. It's an erroneous doctrine. Look what Jesus said. Jesus shows up and says, hey, Thomas, come on over here. <laughs> Reach. Put your hand right there. Put your hand in that hole. Now look at the holes in my hands. Behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And be not, what? Oh. So to have the need to see it before you believe it is faithless. It doesn't produce faith. I'm going to show you something today that you have never looked at probably. And Thomas answered, said unto him, my Lord and my God. Look at verse 29. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen, thou hast believed. But blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. Oh, Jesus said, you should need a physical evidence to believe. Okay, you getting it? So why is the person blessed that believes but does not have to see yet or see first? Because the whole kingdom of God operates on the same principle he told us in genesis 8 22 a seed goes into the ground it's covered up it's hidden you can no you no longer can see it it becomes one with the dirt you can't identify the seed from the dirt it's hidden it's in visible it's in visible how many of you are going to stand on top of the dirt and still see the seed? No, it becomes invisible. And as time goes by, it outputs what's in it. That's called the harvest. So why is a person blessed that don't have the need to see it? Because they understand the invisible realm. A farmer understands the invisible realm. When you become a farmer and not a church goer, you understand the invisible realm. Mm. Because the whole kingdom is based on this principle. The problem is, or has been, is that we don't know what believing is. So are you ready? 
Write this down. Believing is my heaven the exercise. Let me start over. Believing is my heaven to exercise my supernatural ability to visualize something that is not yet materialized and make it manifest with my faith. I said again. Believing is my heaven to exercise my supernatural ability to visualize. Where I'm getting that from? My imagination, my data bank. That's where I see. I see from my data bank, not through my eyes. These are limbs that capture things. But I see in my imagination. Believing is my heaven to exercise my supernatural ability to visualize something that is not yet materialized and make it manifest with my faith. Because my faith is the substance that I build images to manifest out of my beliefs. So faith is not believing. Now that's going to help a lot of you because we... we we kind of mix those terms up. Believing in faith is not the same. Because you believe something don't mean you got faith for it. Because you can believe error and faith won't show up. How does faith come? I'm going to, here's a nugget for you. You never heard it this way probably. Faith comes... Faith comes when I access my data bank and it agrees with faith. Faith comes. Faith doesn't show up when the what you got in your heart on your hard drive does not match what faith is assigned to do. You ever been on your computer and hit an uh, improper uh, command and it, it, the computer said ding and you keep hitting it ding, the computer said, I'm trying to tell you, girl, you're doing the wrong thing. Ding, you go right back to it. The computer trying to tell you, learn the right command, and I'll obey. Mm. Shoo, Jesus. Now, so therefore, if I already can have it, like this Bible, I already have it in my hand. I don't have to believe for this Bible. I know I have a Bible. I want you to forget that. See, there's believing, then there's knowing. You don't have to believe for what you know. I don't have to call this Bible into existence. I already have it. I already have it. Now, but here's the problem with the body of Christ. Because we already have all the promises of God based on his word, but it's not on your hard drive. So he can't access it, process it, and then put an output. We're waiting for miracles all the time. When he said, put the word in you. Faith said, oh, so when you start talking like a faith being, faith says, oh, I can connect to that. She pulled that out of her hard drive. Oh, faith said, I'm coming. Faith says, I'm coming. Faith says, I'm coming. It can connect. I hit the right command.
But if you don't see it yet in this material or the un, this scene realm, because this is the natural, it's called the scene realm, I have to use the supernatural substance of faith and my believing. So my believing is critical. What I believe is critical. I said again, what I believe is critical. Because I just can't throw out a scripture and expect it to manifest because it has to draw from my data bank. And depending on what I got in my data bank, because remember, your conscious mind is already loaded with stuff. And your data bank is trying to get it up so it can be an output so you can say what's right. But if it's not in there, it can't pull it up. And if I got in there, if I believe that the Lord makes people sick, you never have faith. Faith will not show up. And you'll die prematurely. Because that's a tradition that's been put in you that goes against the word of faith. So faith can't show up for you. You're putting in the wrong command. And the thing, it keep going ding. Somebody come to you and say, you know, you really need to change the way you think. And you need to start talking like God. Yeah, I know, but ding. Because you're still operating from the old commands. Mm. Let me read that again. But if I don't have, if I don't see it yet in this natural or the seen realm, I have to use the supernatural substance of faith and my believing to bring it from the unseen or the invisible realm to the seen realm. Why? Because everything that I am assigned to do as a believer requires me to see it in the invisible realm by faith. And if I need faith, I must be able to believe. Because there's no such thing as having faith and not believing. You can't tell me you believe the word and faith didn't show up. I'm going to call you a liar. Because there's an error in what you believe. That's the reason faith didn't show up. So what you believe is crucial. Because it's either, it's, it's affecting my ability to have or not have faith. What I believe. See, what you believe about God. Theology is simply what I believe about God and his word. So you listen to a theologian. They're only going to tell you what they believe about God and his word. Because that's what that is. Remember I taught you all about precepts and concepts? How that a precept is an idea or thought that's suggested to you, but it's not necessarily your thought. But when it's a concept, it's your thought. And your thoughts become your ideology or your belief. That's where you operate your life from, out of your belief system. That's where you live from. That's on auto. Because you got a lot of things floating through your conscious awareness. Come on. We, come on, stand to your feet. We're going we gonna to praise and worship. Why? Let, let, let this medicine go down. You got a lot of stuff to come through your conscious awareness. They don't necessarily land. But you're living from your data bank. Because that's all that's there for you to live from. Whatever's on your hard drive. That's all you got to operate with. You might need to expand your realm. Yeah. Because if you're trying to put out a 32 on a 16, how many of you know it's not going to work? <laughs> 